Welcome everybody, this is a short overview how to install the TI-99 simulator in a Linux environment and in a separate video we will uh, cover how to install it in a Sony uh, portable PlayStation and PSP uh, because it's based on this uh, TI-99 simulator. So you can actually find the simulator at this web, web page over here. So if you scroll down you can find the Linux images over here. So this is the latest one per today. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it on a Windows uh, 10 a professional system and I'm going to uh, run it in a virtual box. So I'm, I downloaded the virtual box over here, this version here for Windows. So I installed this virtual box version and then I installed this Linux version, the Linux Mint 70.3 Rosa Cinnamon 64 bit version, which you can find over here. And um, I installed it in that um, virtual box. Now the um, additional software I used here is the PSP software, which we are going to use later as well. Uh, we can download that at this web page. And uh, if you scroll down, there's here a download file option. We can download this package. Now if you look inside this PSP uh, TI-99 package, over here, this is the package. Then we see this type of files inside. Okay, so we have cartridges, uh, the ROMs, uh, etc. So all those um, uh, are included in that PSP package already. And this one actually includes the ROM files, which we uh, need later as well, because the original TI-99 SIM uh, doesn't include the ROM files, because Texas Instruments doesn't allow them to distribute. Okay, so that is the um, uh, PSP TI-99 file. Now if you look to the Linux uh, files here, so I downloaded all those packages. The one I'm going to use is uh, the TI-99 SIM uh, I686 version, which is this one. Okay, so here it is extracted, so you can find all those files uh, over here as well. Now what I did, um, I copied all these files on a um, USB drive, and then later I connect the USB drive to the Linux um, system so that we can uh, copy those files into Linux. Uh, what is also possible that you go into the Linux system and go to those web pages and download all those files directly into Linux. So let's go to the Linux system. So I installed that already and I opened that already. So here we have um, Linux Mint installed in the Oracle VM virtual box. And um, what I'm going to do now is to connect the um, USB to the system. So this is my USB drive. Okay, so here is the uh, USB drive connected to the Linux system. So that is this one over here. And here we see all those different uh, different files. And what I also did, um, I copied some um, games like um, Otello.binary and some other binaries, Donkey Kong and binaries here to this uh, drive as well. Okay, so you can find them at uh, different uh, resources on the, on the internet. Uh, because later we need to convert those files uh, so that they can be used in the Linux system. So what I did, I copied all these files here. Okay, so copy. Um, and then I moved them to a file system here at Linux. I moved them into the temp directory. Okay, so we see all those files already here, but I will uh, copy them again. So I paste them here. Merge, replace, okay, so all the files are now in the temp uh, directory, and um, now if I go to a terminal window over here, and I go to cd uh, temp, and I do a list, I can see all those uh, files here, so I copy them from the USB stick into the Linux uh, environment. Now the next thing what I need to do is to install the um, uh, the simulator. So I go to cdti99sim. You can use the top key, so that will um, fill the whole um, rule, so you don't have to type everything here. Okay. Okay. So here we see the system. Now, because the, uh, this version of Linux Mint uh, doesn't have root access, so I need to uh, make use of sudo, sudo to install it. So I do a make install, 
So now it's uh, installed actually the TI-99 simulator. And I can find it back here. If I go to opt, TI-99 simulator. So I'm in a different directory now. I can see here uh, the binary, the cartridges, the disk, and the ROMs. So um, because we don't have the ROMs uh, installed, um, I need to, um, because it doesn't come in the packets, I need to install that. So I actually have this ROM here, which came from the PSP image, which we saw earlier on. And I need to copy that to the ROMs directory, but I need to make sure that um, um, the capital letters are used because it is case sensitive. Okay, so I'm going to do that. CD ROMs. And what I'm going to do is in sudo, because the directory requires a, a root access. Copy. Oh. Temp directory. TI 994A.ctg. And that needs to go to the current directory, but it needs to be capital letters 994A. CTG. I also will copy the speech um, ROM because it was also in the package. Temp speech ROM uh, binary to the current directory. Okay, so now I list the files. Now in the TI 99 uh, ROMs, we have the speech ROM bin and the ROMs over here. So now we go one level up and I go to the cartridges. Okay, so we see some cartridges uh, which I copied here uh, already. Uh, but these are the CTG files, so that is the end result. Uh, normally, uh, the files are in a binary format. So if I go back... Um, okay, if I list the temp directory where my original files are, normally those files are uh, in binary format. So um, to convert those from binary to this, this format, uh, there is a uh, convert uh, tool. Um, the, the tool is actually in another directory. It's in the binary over here. Okay, so there is a convert CTG tool, which you need to use to convert those binaries into a CTG format. Okay, so I'm going back here to the uh, cartridges, so that the files will be put directly into this directory. And I do a sudo. And I need to get it from the temp directory. So for example, Donkey Kong. Make sure that it is case sensitive uh, binary. And I will copy that here. So you see, um, it will convert. The title is Donkey Kong. It found uh, three groms. And now in this directory, in the cartridges, I have a uh, file called donkeykongc.ctg. Now, if you have um, multiple files, like what we have here, we have Donkey Kong uh, C binary and Donkey Kong D binary. The tool will automatically recognize that and then convert it to the CTG. So now we have um, the format which the Linux system uh, understands. And now we can actually start the tool. So we can um, go to here, binary. SDL. That is the tool. If you use minus F, you can do it full screen, but I'm not going to do that. Um, and we enter this file Donkey Kong C.ctg. And now it opens a window here. You can actually make it a little bit bigger. And here we have Donkey Kong. For whatever reason, it doesn't st start here. So we converted uh, Donkey Kong, but for whatever reason, it did not work. Uh, earlier on, it was working, but here we can see it uh, using Parsec. So it is the same principle. So here we have the Parsec file. We open it. Open Parsec. We can make it a little bit bigger as well. Power to begin. Alert. I 
Okay, so um, for a strange reason, uh, sometimes not all the binaries uh, get converted uh, properly. Um, what is possible here? We see all the different options of the TI99 simulator. Uh, here you can use minus F for full screen. You can make of uh, joysticks uh, as well. And if you have a uh, gram cracker file or an, um, a disk file, then you can also uh, let it work together with disk systems and the gram cracker. Okay, so that's the end of this uh, short demonstration how to make use of TI99 simulator in Linux.